Hey guys, what's happening? Today we're going to be looking at how to install WordPress on your web hosting. Uh, we're going to be using cPanel web hosting powered by charcoal.com. And let's dive right into the, the tutorial. First thing you want to do is you want to go to wordpress.org. When you get to this page, there's a download button which you want to click download WordPress 4.1 now let's go ahead to that page when you get there you are presented with two different options option number one is to download a zip file or you can download a compressed tar version now the compressed version on a um, you know web hosting panel such as cPanel you have the option to use the file manager which then you can use to extract any compressed files such as the zip or tar um, if it is enabled by your web host of course now um, what we're going to be downloading is the tar version uh, is the same like the zip file except you know it's going to be a little bit more compressed less files for us to deal with so click on the download button download tar.gz and when you click that, it's going to start the download. And when the download is complete, you're going to go into your downloads folder. And when you get to your downloads folder, what you want to do then is take that file and go ahead and uh, upload it to your server. Now, if you don't know how to use an FTP to transfer the file and upload it to your web server, then you're going to need to look at another tutorial on how to use an FTP. Now, let's assume that you already had done that and you logged into your web hosting and you uploaded your file. Uh, if you did not do that, let, let me just quickly show you how it's done. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull up our cPanel control panel. Uh, we're going to log in, uh, make sure you're logged in. And what you want to do is you want to go into your file manager. And when you get to the file manager, now ignore all these. Um, once you get into your file manager, you're going to see the file that you had uploaded. So once uh, you click on it, you have the option to extract the files. Now, when you click on the extract, again, please note this is for cPanel. Uh, it's not the same. Uh, you know, on a different web host and control panel as it's on the EC panel. It might be similar. It might have the same functions available, but it's not going to look the same as you see on the screen. So once we click on the extract files, what that's going to do for us, is going to extract uh, all of these compressed files that come for the WordPress in our directory. So what you want to do is you want to click on the reload button. So once you click the reload button, the WordPress folder appears. Now what I like to do here is um, I like to move all of these files since I'm not going to be using it in a subdirectory. So I want to move it to the root. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and um, select all. Basically you can just click select all or you can hold down your shift button and click on the first and click on the last and it's going to select them all. So basically uh, you can do it manually or you can just click the button to select them all. Once you select them all, what I like to do is move all of these files to the root or in my case to the VP directory. So what I'm going to do now is move all of these to the VP directory, going to go back and now the WordPress folder, remember where all the files used to be, is now empty. So we no longer need this directory and we can go ahead and delete it. Now that we have deleted that, we can also get rid of the compressed file that we had uploaded in the first place. And now we have our WordPress files ready to go. So if I am to go ahead and um, pull up the website where we installed it, the installation is going to come up. And now for the installation, all you have to do is follow the prompts and go step by step and um, input all of your database information. Basically, you have to have your database name, database username, database password, and your database host. If you do not know those and what they are, then you need another tutorial. But if you do know what they are and um, uh, you might be wondering how to create them, 
quickly, I'm going to show you once you are in the C panel, all you have to do is click on my SQL databases from within the home page of the C panel. When you click on that, you have the option to create new databases. Um, you're going to type in your new database, whatever that might be, and click on the create database button. Once you do that, you have to create a new user. Now for the MySQL user, you're going to type in the username, whatever that is. I like to use a password generator uh, so you don't have to come up with some passwords. But once you type in your passwords, um, you know, you can go ahead and use a generator to use the password. Uh, or you can just manually type it in. It doesn't really matter. But anyways, then you have to create the actual user. And once you create that user, what you have to do is you have to assign that user to that database and assign certain privileges. So we'll click on add a user to that particular database and you can choose from the selection of different privileges you want to assign to the user or assign all privileges. Now I like to create all privileges for that particular user. So you click on all privileges, then you click on make changes and voila, you're done. Now going back to the WordPress installation, when you click on let's go button, you have to retype all that information, the database, database name, including its prefix, username, including its prefix, if any, your password, or if you use the one from the password generator, make sure you copied it and paste it in here. Database host, um, if you are on a web hosting, shared web hosting, most likely you're going to be using localhost, which you can also um, specify a 127.0.0.1. Now, some hosts might have this extension blocked and not allow you to use it, um, but, you know, typically majority of the web hosting companies are going to allow it. And what this does, it just speeds up the process a little bit, makes your database run a little bit faster than if you are to type in localhost. Um, the table prefix, if you had, um, you know, a different WordPress version running and this is your blog on the same web hosting account and you want to give this one a different prefix so you don't confuse the two and you don't install something over the top of the other one, you typically want to do something like blog VP or WP. So you know that this is your blog WordPress installation, or if you just are doing it for security purposes and you don't want people to know what those prefixes are, you know, you can do whatever, XXWP. Uh, but anyways, that is for, you know, different case scenarios. If you do want to change your table prefixes, you can. Once you have all that information done, all you have to do is click on the submit button and you are finished. At that point, you can log into your administration and uh, also view the front end and upload, you know, different themes and such um, for your WordPress. So happy blogging. And if you have any questions, make sure you leave them in the comments section below. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next tutorial. Perhaps we'll be making a new theme. Thank you for watching and see you later.